Okay, so the verb ir, you'll see here that I have a picture drawn for you of an actual ir. Ir is the verb to go, and I'm hoping that you'll never forget it because I've drawn an ear with legs moving forward. So the verb ir, to go. It's a verb all by itself, and it conjugates differently. Up to this point, you guys have seen er verbs, ir verbs, and you've seen ar verbs. And with those, we have to get rid of our infinitive ending, add on the conjugated ending, and now we have a conjugated verb. Well, with ir, it's not that easy. Well, actually, you can, you can say it's that easy, but it's just a bit different. We don't get rid of anything. We just absolutely change it altogether. So instead of removing something, you don't have anything to remove with ir. It's two little letters. So it's really important that we see exactly how this thing conjugates. We'll bring back our, our template that you guys are all used to, that you've seen now a few times. That's the template that helps us conjugate the verbs. Well, with the jo, we're going to have a form of its own, and that is boy. Jo, boy. Tu, bas. Remember the pronunciation of V and B? Same thing. So, boy, bas. El, ella, usted, va. Nosotros, vamos. Ellos, ellas, ustedes, van. All right? So, those are the five conjugations. Boy, vas, va, vamos, van. What do you notice if you, go, if you look through all five of those? What do you pick up on? You should recognize four of the endings are the exact same as our AR endings that we had learned before. The only thing we have to really remember is that it's an irregular verb. Ir is an irregular verb. Therefore, we have an irregular yo. So it's boy, vas, va, vamos, van. Okay, good. So what do we do with this? What does it mean? Well, we're talking about where we're going or what we're going to do. There are two things we say with ir, and that is movement or destination. You can see that here, numero uno. And future action, numero dos. So let's give a few examples of each. If, if we're talking about movement and destination, what do you think is going to come after our conjugated form of the verb ir? Right, some place, okay, or some direction. All right, let's take a look. Voy al parque. I'm going to the park. Voy al parque. Boy, whoa. I guess I could have used that, huh? Let's see what color. We're writing in green. Bas. Al concierto. Vas al concierto? Are you going to the park? Van a la playa. Ustedes. Van a la playa. Ustedes. So there you have. Three, diff three examples of movement or destination, talking about someone going somewhere. Let's talk about future action. Tu vas a estudiar. So we're talking about an action in the future, something going on, you know, in uh, a little bit in the future. Tu vas a estudiar. We can make that a question. You're asking someone if they're going to study. Tu vas a estudiar. All right. Van a comer pizza. They are going to eat pizza. Van a comer pizza. Let's give one more. Mi amiga va a trabajar mucho. Mi amiga va a trabajar mucho. And you can go through and pick these out uh, and see for whom they're conjugated. Uh, based on the subject. Some of them we haven't listed, but that's okay. You guys should be able to recognize now that boy is associated with yo. It's the yo form. All right. So over here on slide one, you have three examples of uh, movement or destination. 
On the other side, you have two, three examples of future action. One key piece, and I'm going to delete these in a moment, so I need you to write them down. One key piece that is absolutely necessary, and I'm going to circle it here, is that right there. And this right here. When you're, when you're going to tell where you are going, or you're going to add on a verb to say what you are going to do in the future, you have to have that preposition ah there. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to show you what happened in a couple of our examples. So that ah kind of works like the connector. It connects our verb to go with the place that we are going, or it connects our verb to go with the action that we're going to do. So let's look at one of those examples that we just had. Boy, al parque. Whenever I put this on the board, student, and I don't give any explanation, students are always wondering, what happened here? What is this al? I haven't seen that, or I don't know how it happened. Well, I'll show you. If we wanted to, if we, if I tell you that this is absolutely necessary, well, if you look at parque, do you think it's masculine or feminine? It's masculine. So if it's masculine, what is going to be the definite article that's going to be right in front of it? Right. There's only one, and it's el. So it's boy a el parque. Well, in Spanish, we don't leave this like that. We don't leave a el. We just combine them, and we make al. Boy al parque. Okay? That's important to remember and very, very important to take note of, so practice a few of those. Um, imagine you or someone else going al parque or al concierto, that was another one. Vamos al concierto. Vamos al concierto, we're going to the concert. All we've done is we've made a contraction out of a and el, okay? Those are your five forms of the verb ir, and those are the two uses, future action and movement or destination. All right, best of luck when working with the verb ir. This is a really good verb to know. It can really help you um, improve your ability to make sentences because now you're not just conjugating verbs. You can actually tell what's going to happen in the future. You can tell, uh, talk about someone uh, where they are going. Okay, so this is an important verb. Hope you can commit this one to, rem to memory. Just remember how it goes. Boy, bas, ba, vamos, ban. Okay, you guys have a good one.